everyone, this is Cool, and I am Yumi, and today we're going to talk about the differences in fashion between the States and Europe. Quick disclaimer here, obviously this is all kind of my analysis and my opinions. Now living as a European in the States, I am automatically kind of biased towards European fashion. However, living here for a while has opened up my eyes as to why the fashion is so different and what makes it so different. So let's talk about the first and maybe the most important difference, which is how do we think about clothes and the meaning behind them. Europeans don't actually follow fashion trends as much as they follow unspoken norms and rules about what's fashionable and what's classic in your respective location. For a lot of Europeans, how you look is kind of like a measurement of how put together you are. And because of this, the majority of Europeans actually dress to impress rather than for comfort. A lot of Europeans also hate to stand out from the crowd and that further enhances the need for social norms on how to dress. You will not be seeing someone walking in a leopard print in the middle of town trying to like get everyone's attention. That is not happening. We love to keep it very low key and we all love to look pretty much the same. These dress codes generally also help people navigate what to wear and not feel like the odd one out. For socially awkward individuals and for people who don't know what their style is, this is a great system. But for people who love to experiment or find their own style, this is a problem. This does limit how much a person can experiment with their own style without standing out in the wrong way. When you stand out, it's almost never for good reasons. So this is kind of the bubble of European fashion. We love to keep it low key. We love to keep it polished and clean and put together. And we love everyone to kind of participate in this style. Now, this doesn't mean that people are going to look down on you if you dress differently. However, Europe is not New York City. Which means that, you know, if you dress to impress and you wear something really flashy or colorful or cool, that might not be taken so well in Europe because people don't like that sort of attitude, whether it's in fashion or in a person. So as a young teenager, I did have to navigate through this awkward and not necessarily bad, but also not a super welcoming environment of, hey, you're dressed differently, why? So yes, in that sense, the fashion in Europe is very much ingrained into the culture as well. Now this is definitely me generalizing because I have not been to all of the countries in Europe, which like, that would be a very expensive trip. Generally speaking, wherever I've gone, there seems to be definitely a very set kind of fashion. Whether that's France or Germany, people tend to dress pretty much the same. And when I say the same, I don't mean same as in another country. They all have their own specific type of fashion. Now, for a lot of Americans, clothes are meant to be comfortable and practical. So a lot of the focus in fashion is in comfort and practicality. Especially in recent years with COVID and such, at leisure, leisure wear and active wear have become culturally acceptable to wear in public. From this perspective, American fashion looks pretty laid back and for a lot of Europeans it might look lazy, but when it comes to putting effort into your outfits or wanting to look really fashionable, a lot of Americans go for statement pieces and bright colors. This is their way of standing out and unlike in Europe, this kind of standing out isn't necessarily bad, it's just different and that's pretty normal here because there are so many different kinds of people and so many different kinds of cultures. You can already see that there is so much diversity here that automatically you don't have to assume that everybody should wear the same exact stuff. Unlike in Europe, where looking very different from the rest of the crowd is frowned upon, here it's more of a way of self-expression. People usually do praise you for it. We wouldn't even want to talk to a stranger in Europe. Because American fashion isn't also tied to a lot of conservative or religious elements like a lot of European countries are, it's easier to dress according to one's own comfort levels, such as wearing tank tops or miniskirts. Unlike in Europe, the US doesn't have unspoken rules on what is considered fashionable, and this leads to people following fashion trends in order to make sure that they are, well, fashionable. Following something that Kim Kardashian or Sydney Sweeney would wear. That is what people will gravitate towards because that is what we are considering as a whole acceptable, because trends are acceptable. Because of this lack of rules though, Americans do have this sense of freedom when it comes to experimenting with aesthetics and different styles. I don't think a lot of Finnish people, for example, would be comfortable with trying out cottage core or fairy core because we have such a strong sense of what is right when it comes to fashion. So when it comes to how we think about fashion, both of these places have their pros and cons. We have more of like the classic styles in Europe and then what is considered to be fashionable or trendy in the moment in the States. So next, let's talk about the importance of location. So like I mentioned previously, like there are different styles according to each state in America, there are different styles 
according to each country in Europe. So in Europe, we have Northern Europe, which is like Finland and Sweden, Central Europe, like Germany and France, Southern Europe, like Spain and Portugal. And these would kind of compare with like the American West Coast versus East Coast fashion. Now what's important about this distinction is that weather and culture affect the fashion of each state and country. So for example, in Nordic countries like Finland, there is an emphasis on being practical yet fashionable. So for example, being able to lay your clothes is really important in Finland because the weather can really shift, but usually it's pretty cold and you want to be able to like take off a coat and take off a blazer and put them back on when you go back outside. And in places like Nordic countries, colors are pretty much non-existent. Outfits are minimalist and you don't really see people wearing different styles unless it's in big cities like Stockholm or Helsinki. Now, I don't know much about the fashion up north in the States except for like New York City, so I'm just gonna assume that they have the same importance of layering. Even though the fashion here is more laid back, I think it is still fashionable because, for example, you have flannel shirts on top of graphic t-shirts and jeans, and you have your Doc Martens. I think the bigger picture in the States, though, is the East Coast versus West Coast, so I don't have a lot to say on, like, Northern States fashion. I'm sure someone else will be very happy to elaborate on that in the comments section, please. I think overall, Nordic countries in Europe have more similarities with the East Coast, and then southern countries would have more similarities with the west coast. And in central Europe, we still have that minimalism and we have that structure with a little bit of edgy details. However, the overall vibe is still very minimal and maximalist is never quite in style. I've seen colors in style and I've seen some patterns in style, but never maximalism. In the US, the fashion trends tend to be more laid back, like they would be saying in North Carolina. Like you have a lot of college fashion, you have a lot of like that southern fashion. Christian fall girl, y'all. This is the category that I don't know as much about, which is southern Europe. From what I understand, there is more color, but most outfits remain classy and minimal still, and there is still a lot of structure around outfits. There is a greater emphasis on suits and blazers than in Nordic countries where such outfits get hidden underneath a winter coat. Because of the hot weather, there is less emphasis on layering and more emphasis on accessorizing and staying comfortable in the heat. Notable similarities. A big thing to note in fashion across Europe and the States is that most of the clothing and fashion trends throughout the world are generated by the same large companies. Think about H&M and Zara, for example. Because of this and the slow decline of cultural attire being worn in modern day situations, most of the same clothing is offered across the US and Europe. All in all though, Zara, H&M and companies like this exist both in Europe and the States and you can pretty much almost buy the same clothes from both of these places. Now it might look very different because of marketing. You want to market a very specific kind of style to Europeans versus what you would market to Americans. So in that sense, it can look very different, but it's still the same clothes and the same kind of trends that are being offered to both. Women's versus men's fashion. Men in Europe tend to dress nicer than American men, there's a lot more variety in European men's fashion, and a lot of it could be looking more feminine or androgynous in the eyes of American men. And that's another example that is maybe a little bit extreme, but in high school I had a classmate who would always wear button-ups to school. American fashion tends to be a lot more laid back, so a lot of the button-ups and blazers get saved for special occasions. The difference in women's fashion is less obvious, but there is a big difference in how much skin women ought to show in their respective societies. A lot of the role models for fashion in America are definitely celebrities, and usually you see them in skimpier fits with much more skin showing, more revealing cuts. A lot of European countries have conservative or religious roots, so there are kind of unwritten rules on what is appropriate for women to wear out in public, for example. Now, this doesn't mean that women always follow that rule, and in places like churches or formal events, you are very much expected to dress a very certain way, and usually that certain way is more conservatively. The other small detail in Europe is that women tend to think through their outfits well in advance. I also remember as a child that fashion was a pretty big key part of one's identity. Fashion was something that kids learn pretty young. We're talking like 11, 12. So this is how a lot of European kids grow up, and it's, I know, very different from, for example, American public school systems where you have a lot of rules on dress codes and what girls are allowed to wear and how short or long their skirts can be and we have none of that in most places in Europe. Now for the categories. What is categorized as European fashion? European fashion is classy and subtle, sometimes even regal cuts and silhouettes. Minimalist with some edgy or soft details. Clean and simple. 
geometric appearances, so lots of sharp edges, lots of blazers, lots of dress pants. Shoes are usually classy but practical, you don't really see a lot of high heels because a lot of European women tend to walk like crazy. And lastly, there is strict trend or crowd following and it's harder to lean into a niche or individual fashion. European fashion is not Emily in Paris. We don't have exaggerated neck scars, berets and crazy colors. However, we do prioritize making sure we look put together and we always put our best foot forward with our outfits. Even if it's grocery shopping or going to a cafe, you are going to look your best. A lot of Europeans think that too sexy is often too much and subtlety is key. No athleisure culture unless it's strictly linked to fashion and even then it's like depending on the location. So maybe you could pull off tracksuits in Berlin, but nobody would be wearing athleisure to go get groceries or get coffee. What is considered as American fashion? Loud or maximalist outfits and colors that make you stand out. The college aesthetics, so for example, oversized sweaters paired with leggings, hoodies paired with yoga pants, and biker shorts with oversized t-shirts. Relaxed and casual looks like athleisure or leisure wear, or sports-related fashion, for example, a Mets jersey or an Eagles hat. Definitely more sports-supporting logos and patches and just overall merchandise. Less restrictions on how much skin you can show and more accepting of pieces like, for example, brown excess tops. Merch wear, such as Disney-branded clothes. And finally, the East Coast versus West Coast styles. American fashion generally leans towards individualism and lots of colors in comparison to most of Europe. Because there is a more relaxed attitude towards style, you're less likely to experience specific types of fashion aesthetics like academia or cottagecore in some states. However, Americans are also more accepting of trends and therefore cycle through various different styles, often cool, often dipping in and out of maximalism every few years or so. So as a final thought, I think that Europe and the States are very different in how they dress, but not as different as most would think. I think a lot of Europeans just simply have higher standards for what is fashionable and what is acceptable in fashion. And a lot of Americans love to focus on comfort and self-expression. And so we have like this very strict and structured and this kind of relaxed and experimental fashion, whatever you want to call it, going on. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know where you're from and what you think about European versus American style. And I'll see you next time.